I am delighted to now introduce our commencement speaker. We are honored to have Daniel B. Hobitz, CEO of DDR Corporation, deliver our keynote address. With corporate headquarters located in Beechwood, Ohio, DDR owns and manages over 450 retail properties representing 116 million square feet in 39 states, Puerto Rico, and Brazil. Mr. Hurwitz joined DDR in June 1999 and was named CEO during very challenging times on January 1, 2010. Mr. Hurwitz has been named to Institutional Investor Magazine's 2013 All-America Executive Team as the best CEO in the real estate investment sector. Dan, this is quite an honor to add to your many others. In addition to serving as a member of Weatherhead's Visiting Committee, Mr. Hurwitz is a member of the Colgate University Board of Trustees, a member of the Board of Trustees of Hawkins School, Chairman of the Leadership Council for the Neurological Institute at the Cleveland Clinic, and a member of the Board of Directors of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum. Mr. Hurwitz is a graduate of Colgate University and the Wharton School of Business Management Program at the University of Pennsylvania. Dan, we are delighted to have you address our graduating students this afternoon. Thank you very much. It's a great thrill to be here. I must say, uh, to get applause on the stage of Severance Hall for someone whose musical career ended with the third grade kazoo <laughs> is really exceptional. This is one of those bucket list sort of events, so thank you very much. President Snyder, uh, Dean Whiting, distinguished faculty, and of course, graduates, your friends and family. Today is a festive day for all of you and in particular, this exceptional class of 2013, and I'm honored to speak to you on this momentous occasion. And while many of you may think school is over, I want to ask you a few more questions and ask you to think a bit further before you leave this spectacular venue. So let's start today by asking you, the graduates of this elite institution, questions that I hope you find thought-provoking. First, why are we here? Are we here to celebrate your accomplishments? Are we here to celebrate your intellect? Are we here to say goodbye? Those are the typical reasons why family and friends gather at commencement exercises. However, I'd like to suggest something a little different. A different set of questions, the answers of which, in my opinion, will define your transition from professional student to a professional business person. In regard to your intellectual accomplishments, let's start with an easy question. A show of hands of the graduates, please. How many folks graduating today are not smart? <laughs> Good. Conversely, how many of you today are smart? Show of hands, please. Are you sure you double clutched? You know? <laughs> you sure? With all the hands going up in support of your intellectual confidence equal to the person sitting to your right, to the left, in front of you, and behind you, and also the same as every graduate and undergraduate celebrating today across the country, with all those hands up in the air to the question of are you smart, what does that tell you? It tells you that being smart is a commodity, not a point of differentiation. It's the minimum requirement today in the corporate, academic, or not-for-profit world. And you all have that, and I congratulate you. But life's winners enjoy a point of differentiation and refuse to wallow in a commoditized world. So my question to you is, since we've all established now that you're smart, what else do you got? You see, brains are for sale. You can always hire the best and brightest lawyer you can always hire the best and brightest banker, engineer, architect, doctor, accountant. There is no shortage of smart people. All commodities are available for a price. So what else do you got? What is your point of differentiation? And if you don't know, is it fair to expect others to know? Is it reasonable to ask a potential employer or partner 
who may have the key to the castle, an impactful option on your career to figure it out for themselves? I think not. It's time to show the world that your best attribute is not the same as everyone else with whom you will compete. Do you have leadership ability? Do you have charisma? Are you a convincing communicator? Are you a potential mentor? Are you a good judge of talent? Are you brave enough to take risk? Will people do business with you because they want to, as opposed to because they have to? And will they admire you because of your name, as opposed to that of your employer? The answer to these questions has more to do with your character than your intellect. And character is the essential bridge to success. Being smart today simply is not enough. Because as I said, brains are easily obtainable. But the attributes I just mentioned are not, and never will be. They are what make you special. So what I would argue today is more of a soul-searching mission than simply a commencement. In about an hour, you're going to join the long list of individuals that are now officially a commodity, a highly educated college graduate. And the world is going to ask you, what else you got? In an environment where you don't want your most impressive attribute to simply be basic smarts, how will you otherwise impress and succeed? What will your legacy be? And what will the road to that legacy look like? Now, many of you have either received or are searching for a job. And if the company that has hired you or the company with whom you are interviewing doesn't ask the question, what else you got, or what makes you special, beware. Because if a company doesn't ask that question, what makes you special, they omit it for a reason. They don't care. And if they don't care, shame on them. They don't deserve you. But if you are asked the question, make sure that you have the answer. And make sure that the answer to the question of what makes you special isn't simply that I'm smart. That is absolutely unverifiable and inauthentic. However, all your other personal attributes and characteristics define you and scream authenticity and differentiation. If you can package those aspects around your intellect, they remove you from the commodity bucket and they make you a must-have. I assure you that your career success and professional growth will hit an early ceiling if the best attribute you possess is simply brains. You will certainly always have a job but unlikely to have a career. Go the other direction and make yourself special. Why do your family and friends love you? Wouldn't they love you if your GPA was 100 basis points less? Why do your peers admire you? Why do mentors select you as a mentee? It's certainly not because you are devoid of character or talent. They see something in you. What is it? Harness those intang intangibles. Harness those qualities. Harness the individual aspects and attributes of your character that make you special. Dig deep and think about those qualities and leverage those talents to propel yourself to the next level. Now that we've talked about showing the world what else you got, let's talk a minute about what else you need. First and foremost, Find yourself that special life partner who shows you unparalleled support, challenges you and comforts you when needed. Because if your personal life is not settled, the uncertainty is difficult to ignore and overcome in a work environment. You can't just leave it home, it comes with you. Life is hard, it's unfair, and it can hold you back. My wife Ellie is here today with my son Benjamin and for 20 years, she has put up with me, supported me, challenged me, and simply made me better. Without her, I would not be on the stage today. She has never done a real estate transaction or run a large public company. But her support and love has enabled me to do so, and we all need that balance to reach our potential and to simply be happy. And we're all entitled to simply be happy. And when you are asked, and you will be asked, and when you are asked during your professional career to lead a vast organization where employees' personal and professional lives are dependent on you, are dependent on your vision and execution, the first thing you should do 
is ask yourself, do I know someone special? Is that person smarter than me? And do I trust him without question or reservation? If so, make that person your chief of staff. I'm very fortunate to have such an individual in my life. And Joe Tishar, who's here today, is an undergraduate from Weatherhead and an individual of uncommon skill and is a living example of what else you got. I also would not be on the stage without his partnership. In business, trust is the currency of the realm and success is not achievable without it. Find those people you trust and hold on as tight as possible. There will be few and far between, but undoubtedly the quintessential component of your legacy. You see, you all possess incredible capacity to accomplish goals beyond your wildest expectations. I suggest that you don't even know how exceptional your capacity truly is. Never doubt your ability to add value and make an immediate impact. You don't always have to be patient. Your impact can be immediate. But also recognize that there are people you need who are absolutely necessary to reach those heights. People more compassionate and empathetic than you, people smarter and more practical than you, and people who are even more focused and advanced than you on particular issues. However, contrary to some conventional wisdom, those are not the people you attempt to overcome. Those are not the people with whom you compete or try to beat. Those are the people from whom you learn. Those are the people you embrace and enlist on your team because ultimately they are the ones who will make you better. Those are the ones that enable legacy goals to be achievable. I'm a firm believer that Warren Buffett is correct. You will ultimately be successful if the people who you hope to have love you actually do love you. The people that you trust actually trust you. There is no one I know who commands the love and trust of others who isn't a success. And I can't envision those who aren't loved and trusted ever being successful. As I wish you much success in 2013 and beyond, remember to accentuate your, your unique attributes, all that make you different. Avoid becoming a commodity. Surround yourself with loving, trusting, and supportive individuals with more talent than you. And also, never forget, never, ever, ever forget where you came from. This institution is an aggregation of very special people committed to preparing you for life. So wherever life takes you, always remember the support to support those who supported you and help the next generation of Weatherhead grads as those before you have helped make this day possible for each of you. You will always get back more than you give regardless of the situation and in this case, the good news is you have already received. So why are we here today? We're here to tip our cap to your intellect and academic accomplishments. The piece of paper you will receive tells a great story of your hard work and your potential capacity. But most importantly, we are here to suggest that these pieces of paper are not your claim to fame. In fact, if the diploma you receive today becomes your greatest accomplishment, your defining moment, your overall identity, I suspect you will not ultimately be satisfied as you can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. So I implore you, take your diploma and frame it with pride and hang it on the wall to remind yourself of where you came from. But then, turn the page, get out in the world, believe in yourself, fear no one or no thing, don't be afraid to be great, and show them all what else you got. Thank you, and I wish you all Godspeed. Thank you, Dan, for your profound and uplifting advice. The school strives to develop leaders who innovate, to create sustainable value, and are good global citizens. Thank you for serving as a role model for the school.